Hello guys, I hope you're all doing good. So I thought it would be really interesting and very useful for you and your own projects when I talk a little bit about the whole color topic. Just because I think not a lot of artists really talk about this whole color theory thing um, and why creatures have specific colors or patterns or shades. Um, and if they are really useful for them or if they just have them in a random variation. So actually there are a specific background behind each color and why creatures have specific colors on it. And I want to talk about that a little bit here to go more in depth. And I think it can really improve your own work uh, when you do more a realistic touch on your creatures even when it's just a cartoony creature but it definitely helps to understand the whole color theory better and no worry when i started as a creature artist i did everything wrong with colors as well so i mean everybody loves colors and i love a lot of um, different colors in in a bright tone very saturated i mean i still do but Something I didn't do was thinking about why I put specific colors onto my creatures and this was totally wrong and I couldn't really say why something looked odd on my creatures but it was definitely the color. The reason is that I never really took care of the backstory of my creature. Something I always recommend having a little bit of backstory for every creature you're doing because it makes your life so much easier when it comes to creating an environment, to create um, your colors or whatever you want to add to your creature. It's always better to have a little bit of backstory. Um, but anyway, I didn't really took care of that and that's why my creatures always looked some odd with the colorations and I couldn't really figure out why. But after I dig more into the whole color theory and why creatures have specific colors and patterns, I understand that it is so important to just take a moment and think about which colors could fit to your whole story. And in this video, I just wanna help you a little bit to understand uh, the science behind it a little bit better. And it's actually not a lot and pretty easy to remember. So I hope this video will help you to level your creatures a little bit up. So I have five points I want to talk about. I will just list them up here and then I will go more into depth so we can understand it better. So the first point is natural colors. Then we have the illusion effect. Then we have attracting colors, then warning colorations, and the last one is counter shading. Like I said before, it's pretty easy to remember them. Um, and sometimes it can be that some of them can melt into each other. So, but I will just talk about that later. So let's just dive into each of these points. I would say let's start with the first point and it is about natural colors and i think it's pretty obvious which color palettes we have when we are using natural colors it is everything what you see outside in nature so most common colors are brown yellow green and grayish and this is something you can remember pretty easily um, I know that nature has a lot more colors out there, but when you're going more with the earthy tones um, and when you know that creatures are most of the time in, uh, in grasslands or trees or on the ground, then these colors are definitely easier to remember. So there is one big reason why creatures have natural colors on their skin or fur or scales and it's because they want to hide they want to melt into the environment and a reason for that is a lot of 
animals are not predators so they are actually food for other creatures and this is the reason why they really need to hide to um, save themselves and creatures are pretty good in that sometimes they can change their skin tones to the environment sometimes they can change their fur color to uh, change the different seasons here's for example um, a rabbit which sits in uh, a snowy landscape and it definitely melts into the environment when you look at it and the cool thing is that these kind of rabbits can change their fur color a little bit so when it's summertime they are looking more brownish and when it's winter the fur turns into white and i think i think lynx can do that as well i'm not sure but there are definitely a lot of animals who can do that or when you're looking at a chameleon they can change their skin color to melt into the whole environment and to camouflage a little bit. Uh, when you are thinking about soldiers, uh, they always have these kind of camouflage suits on when they are in war or something, uh, just because they want to hide and melt into the environment and creatures do the same. Of course, predators also have those natural colors to hide themselves so they can hunt better. Um, but yeah, overall, the main reason why creatures have a natural color is to hide themselves and to melt into the environment around them. And here are a few other pictures so you can imagine it better. So for example, we have like a leaf insect, which is really cool because it looks 100% like a leaf. You wouldn't recognize it if you see it on a, on a tree or a branch or something or a plant. Um, it's crazy. Then we have a caterpillar. I mean caterpillars have a very very um, high variation of colors in general and patterns but most of them are green and brownish so they can hide under leaves and on branches. Then we have this picture is pretty cool. Um, it is actually a spider here in this picture and you can't really see it because it has these earthy tree tones on it and the whole pattern looks like a tree and this is why you actually can't see it and it's pretty good for it because insects can run over it and then they can hunt it pretty easily like i said so hiding is definitely one big point when it comes to natural colors then here three other pictures of a snail leopard, an owl and a leopard and they all have the same color than the environment around it and where they are mostly seen. And then another picture is an orchid mantis who actually looks like an orchid. Overall to bring everything together when you want to do a creature with more earthy tones, so in a natural color look, then keep in mind that most creatures who have these colors want to hide from the environment so that they don't want to be seen so easily. It doesn't matter if it's a prey or it's a predator, but the main point here is camouflaging and melting into the environment and hiding themselves. Then coming to the next point and that is illusion colors. And I told you before that some of the points are melting into each other and that's the case of the natural colors and the illusional colors. The reason for that is pretty simple. When creatures blending into an environment so well, then they kind of give an illusion of being something in nature as well. So for example, when you have a frog and he has like uh, grayish tones, then he kind of look like a stone. So it is an illusion that he is a stone. Um, so that's why I say they are melting together. But illusional colors are not only melting into the environment, they have a more specific function. Illusional colors are a combination of colors and patterns. 
patterns are so important when it comes to illusional effects and when we are just looking at this butterfly here we all know butterflies they're beautiful they're colorful in all kind of variation but when you're looking at this specific butterfly then you are seeing these big circles on the wings and when you look deeper then they look like eyes now looking at this butterfly you can definitely recognize that this creature is not dangerous it's pretty fragile and has a lot of enemies right so let's say there is a bird who want to eat it then the only thing the butterfly has to do is to spread the wings and to look like a creature which is big because of the big eyes on the wings it gives the illusion that this creature is a big creature not only a pattern or a color this illusion can really benefit this butterfly because it gives at least a few seconds which the butterfly can fly away because the enemies are scared for you know like a little time but seconds are so important uh, when it comes to hunting so sometimes a few seconds can save your life then we're going to another creature we all know a zebra we all know that zebras has these white and black stripe patterns over the whole body they are pretty messy they uh, are not in a straight line or something um, but this is a huge benefit for this creature and it is actually called dazzle effect dazzle effects are so fascinating because they can confuse our eyes i have another image here uh, which you can look at and yes it is just an image it's not a gif or an animated picture it is just an image but because there are so many different patterns at the same place our eyes get confused and we think that this picture is moving it's pretty fascinating and dazzle effects with the zebras have the same effect imagine having a horde of zebras in africa running around now you have on every zebra these kind of dazzle patterns and when enemies come and want to hunt them then they get confused a lot where the zebra is ending where it's starting is it a big one is it a small one you can't really see it because the eyes of the enemies are just confused by it that's why also it's often the case that predators just want to split the group so they doesn't really get confused anymore where a zebra is and where it starts and ends so yeah this is something um, what is pretty pretty cool when it comes to the dazzle effect I have another creature here which also uses the dazzle effect but in a different way so we have here a snake and actually it doesn't really matter what the color and pattern is for a snake because the dazzle effect is used by their movement we all know that snakes move when they are making these weird s curves on the ground or in the water and when they are doing this pretty pretty fast then they can make this dazzle effect as well um, if you have more snakes next to each other this would be totally uh, confusing but well most of the time they're not together but when like i said when they're doing it pretty fast then you get this dazzle effect as well what is pretty cool so to summarize the second point with the illusional colors next time when you're doing a creature and you want to give it a really cool pattern then stop a little bit and think about why does it have those patterns maybe it has patterns because it want to make it big um, maybe it want to scare enemies away maybe it want to confuse an enemy um, anything like that um, or it just makes an illusion of hiding in the environment everything you are thinking about but don't just put 
the random pattern on a creature. Just think about it. Why does it have this pattern? Then we are coming to the third point and it's about attracting colors. Colors are amazing when it comes to attraction. We all love colors. We get more attracted and more focused on something what is bright. That's why um, it's pretty common that women have like red lipstick or a red dress because this attracts men better. And it's not different in the animal world. So I have to say that animals are pretty old school. So everything when it comes to attracting colors, um, the male creatures have it. So when you're just comparing females and males in the animal kingdom, then most of the time the male creatures have all the bright colors or look just more impressive than the female. I also have to say that most of these attracting colors are in the bird kingdom and less in the other categories. Um, I mean when you're looking at for example a deer then yes of course the male have these impressive antlers on it or when you're looking at lions then the male lion has these big mane but when it comes to colors they are not really different so everything is more common in the bird area i have a few other pictures here so you can imagine better what i mean for example i have here a couple of birds and yes male birds need to be colorful and bright and beautiful and everything needs to sit on the right place to attract the ladies and you can see here in this picture that the male bird has really bright red colors compared to the female who only have like soft brownish earthy tone colors so a lot of times female birds have these early tones just to not get too much into the focus. Then we have here a pheasant couple um, where you can see the male has a really colorful brownish reddish body and a red face and the blue is going on the neck. It's pretty nice and compared to the female it is just light brown whitish. And then we have another picture of ducks. Um, some of the ducks are more colorful when it comes to male than female. You can see that here as well. Um, and then of course the master of being beautiful is a peacock. A peacock male looks amazing. They don't only have amazing beautiful colors but they also have these big feather tails on its body compared to of course a female who look more grayish or brownish like in earth tones. So summarizing this little point of attracting colors um, is just that most of the male creatures have brighter colors than compared to the females who are more on the earthy natural tones. And like I said before, it is most common in the bird area instead of other um, areas like mammals, sea creatures and stuff like that. But of course, there are exceptions as well. For your own projects, if you are planning doing a couple of creatures, then maybe you can implement this knowledge into it. So make the male creature more colorful and beautiful and hold the female more in earthy tones. So we already had the natural colors, the illusion colors and the attracting colors. Now we are going on to the warning colors. Warning colors can be so good to save lives, especially for us humans, but of course as well for all the creatures who have colors of these or who don't want to get in touch with these. Warning colors are 
pretty saturated and bright and they also have bold patterns most of the time so that you can see them pretty easily and every time you're seeing something what is pretty colorful uh, and you don't know this creature then please be careful to touch it or to actually come closer to it creatures have these colors because they want to signalize the enemies that if you touch me then you will die or if you eat me then i will kill you inside something like that most of these creatures are dangerous because they have venom or spines stingers a foul scent a strong bites or are just toxic so poison is not the only dangerous thing when it comes to warning signs here are some images of some of the most dangerous creatures on earth and let's start with the blue ringed octopus here it looks so beautiful but please don't touch it um, then we have here the coral snake um, we have a caterpillar like i said before caterpillars are not um, only running around with having a natural look they also can be very colorful and hairy sometimes um, then we have the poison arrow frog i think we all know these kind of creatures they can be blue red yellow greenish whatever um, but they have a very very strong color and saturation when you see them and they're pretty small um, and then we also have these sea slugs which you better don't touch as well but i have to say that not every creature who's dangerous has these warning colors um, of course there are creatures who just look natural um, or have just like simple colors for example we all know scorpions uh, most of the scorpions have like black or brownish colors there are a few who look more yellowish or reddish but most of them look more um, brown to just hide with the environment better then we have a jellyfish some of their breeds are very very dangerous and can burn your skin away when you touch these little I actually don't know really what this is these little antlers um, and then we also have creatures which you don't really realize they were dangerous for example lorries yep I didn't know that too but lorries actually are a little bit poison um, they have this venom under their armpits and when they're licking the secretion away with their tongue then the secretion gets on the teeth as well and when you get a bite from a lorry then it can be that the bite was poisoned but please keep in mind that not every creature who is dangerous has bright colors and not all creatures who look pretty soft and natural toned are not dangerous if that makes sense going back to your projects and your creature designs if you have a creature who is dangerous who is poisoned or i don't know have something what can be very dangerous to other creatures humans or whatever then think about all these warning colors they can be pretty colorful they don't need to but it is a cool future when you are thinking about that and keeping that in mind and now we're coming to the last point which is about counter shading and to explain counter shading in pretty simple and easy words it's just that creature has colors on top and on the underneath right and the top colors are mostly very dark and the bottom like the belly part and stuff are very light this is counter shading i think signs still try to find out why counter shading is a thing for some creatures and for some not um, but these are the things i found out so counter shading has typically been considered beneficial for protecting against ultraviolet which actually comes from the sun and this is because the dark color of the skin or fur is due to melanin 
the pigment that strongly dissipates potentially damaged ultraviolet radiation. Also, a dark body color often helps animals to gain more heat from the sunlight. If you know ice bears, then you would think that, well, ice bears are white, right? Yes, the fur is white, but underneath the skin is pretty dark and that's why it comes to um, heating up the body with the dark colors of the skin. And I have here some pictures which are pretty cool and where you can see that ice bears are not just white and yellowish, they also are pretty dark underneath. Another reason for having these darker backs and lighter bellies is to just hide from the predators a little bit more. Like it is the same like camouflaging into the environment, but uh, yeah, especially when it comes to the sun, which can reflect a lot, um, it can help to melt into the environment as well. A good example for that is, for example, a whale. A whale has a really, really dark color on the back and is almost white on the underneath. And when you are looking um, on a whale from the bird view outside from the sky, then you can't really see a whale so much because when you look down into the water, then the water gets deeper and darker, right? So the color, the darker color on the back, will melt into the darker tones of the deep water. But when you're looking at a whale from underneath, so you're diving in the water and uh, the whale is coming from above, then because of the reflection of the sun from above, you see everything more lighter when you look up. So the whole white belly would melt better into the ocean. Of course, not all creatures who have counter shadings um, melt into the whole environment, but just keep that in mind that it can be a reason. Here's some other pictures where you see that the belly is lighter and the top where the fur or the skin is facing the sun is darker. So for example, we have a crocodile here, a tiger, um, penguins, and stuff you know like you can see it on many different kind of animals i'm not really sure how it works with dinosaurs i mean we don't really know how dinosaurs specifically look like with colors but if we have counter shading in our animal kingdom i definitely think that we have it for the dinosaurs as well so if you're planning doing a project and a model with a dinosaur then maybe keep that in mind as well, that counter shading can be a thing for it. Another very useful thing to know when it comes to counter shading is how the counter shade transition looks. So if we have a very sharp transition or is it more smooth and soft? One reason for the difference is to look where the creature is living, in which places does it live. So for example, we have creatures who are living in a very, very hot place. Let's say, for example, Africa. Um, the hours of sun is definitely higher and hotter than in other places. And when we are looking now at one creature here, for example, an antelope, then you can see that the counter shading, the transition between the light color, the white belly, and the brownish darker color on the top is way more sharp. The reason for that is because hotter places are more sharp when it comes to colors in general and when you are having those sharp lines you can hide better into the environment. Compare this creature with a normal red deer in a forest so we know that the sunlight can't shine through the forest so much, so it's not so hot, um, especially in uh, Middle Europe, for example. So when you're looking at those kind of creatures, then you see that the transition between the lighter colors and the darker colors is way more soft. Sometimes you rarely can see them, 
but if you do then it's pretty soft. So when you want to play around with the counter shading you also have to keep in mind where your creature is living. Is it living in a very hot place or is it living in a cold place um, with a lot of clouds or less sunshine? Everything um, brings it together to how the counter shading is look like. So let's just summarize a little bit what I talked here with the five points. So we have the natural look, which all comes more together in hiding and to the environment. Then we have the illusion colors, which is a great benefit when you want to scare enemies away or want to confuse them. Um, then we have the attracting colors, um, mostly is shown in the um, bird's kingdom. Um, so just keep in mind that most of the time male creatures are more colorful and beautiful than the females who have more earthy tones. Then we have the warning colors. So that means that when there are very bright colors, saturated, very bold patterns on a creature, then be a little bit careful when you don't know this creature. It can show that this type of creature has venom or is poisoned or stings or whatever, some kind of things what can scare other enemies away. Um, and then we have the last point, the counter shading. Just keep in mind that um, some animals have these counter shadings on their skin or on their fur and it is just like having a darker top of the creature and a lighter underneath. So and that's it. Um, next time when you're doing a creature then please think about these five points because it can definitely make your creature look more realistic and more alive and can level it up. And yeah, I hope that helps and you see us in a next video.